All right, let's talk about supply chains and how we can look for opportunities to trade supply and demand at an area or where there's a bigger swing at where the market has created a supply chain, which either is creation of multiple supply zones or demand zones. I'm going to show you now. Now, I have a lot of stuff in my chart. See these little boxes, and I didn't want to go back and have to erase each and every one of them. But I'm going to show the swings to you um, in, in reference to, supply, to, to the market uh, moving to the downside. We're breaking structure. But each time we break structure to the downside, the market is creating a bigger swing when it ends up breaking a, um, you know, a major low, say, for, for example, okay, as it does. And within that movement, as it's moving to the downside and breaking structure, there is a creation of what we like to call a supply chain. All right. That's just multiple areas of smaller areas of supply within the bigger move. And I want to show you what you can look for in reference to uh, trying to identify which one of those zones to, to, to take trades from. You know, we could be looking for areas where liquidity is being broken. And within this range you see right here, we have, as I said, multiple supply areas down to the downside now these are small little internal um uh supply areas within uh the internal range here so this is just more internal structure that's that's where they have smaller breaker structures to the downside what we want to look for that will help um try to identify key areas of supply within this range right here to possibly take a trade from are there multiple areas of inducement for one that, that where you have the uh, internal structure to the uh, downside right here where any of these areas uh, which could be included or act as areas of inducement which took out structure below here at uh, 18,000 say 200 and additionally too so this is going to be internal uh, areas of structure and then you have external areas of structure outside of the range right here so but we want to take trades of course when the market gets back into an area uh, within a, a range okay where there's multiple small areas of supply it now we want to avoid um the areas of supply where uh those areas have already been mitigated meaning the, where the market has pulled back to those small areas of supply which are internal areas within the range okay avoid those areas that kind of goes back to what i talked about before about you know is did, did the market leave a gap at an area of supply or demand that increases the stakes or makes it more high probability area of interest when we're looking to take trades from um in this case here at a supply zone so we, we're looking for inducement we're looking for to see if liquidity was was uh you know being taken out as well because the banks and institutions, what they like to do is take out areas of liquidity, and those areas of liquidity are produced by areas of inducement within the market, and it could be inside the range or externally outside the range. So we want to see and kind of identify has um, those has multiple areas of inducement or areas of liquidity been taken out, you know, leading back up as the markets would trace into a zone. So we'll take a look at that as well. And then sometimes you'll have areas of internal uh, liquidity that's actually being um, taken out okay and that also in t uh, um, raises the interest of once the market pulls back to a key area of supply within range here you know it can it can increase the interest of making a particular unmitigated zone of, of higher probability as well so let's take a look at some of these zones uh, back within this range right here okay so range is like I said if you see where the market is putting pushing down, we'll take a look here at the the uh, 60 range chart. Just kind of uh, you know eliminate these boxes in your mind, and we'll look at it from maybe a, a higher uh, base chart to a 120 range because maybe you have lots of individuals have a hard time looking at things from maybe the lower you start moving down or scaling down to um, when it comes to charts, uh, regardless of the of the the chart you use, whether it's time base or volume or tick. It starts to uh, get a little bit more noisier. So bigger charts, a high white or higher base charts, will start to make things a little bit um, look a little bit more uh, easier to the eye to, to find uh, structural breaks. So we have the market making lows, lower highs, low, lower highs. When we say low, lower highs, or highs or making higher highs and higher lows, we're just uh, talking about which way is the market breaking structure. In this case here, we're, we're, we're breaking structure to the downside. So you should be able to kind of kind of see that. Um, I'll, I'll draw it out right quick just for reference. Oops, let's do this. Ah, let me bring this down here and then we can do it. So the market's just breaking structure right here, as you can see. And I'm just kind of doing this real quick. All right. And all it's doing is making higher, I mean, excuse me, lower lows and lower highs. Okay. So we're talking about um, this area right here. We just had a low, lower high, a new low, pulling back, making a um, 
uh, lower low, lower a uh, new lower high right here. But this is a range right here. Like I said, there could be multiple areas of supply within these this range, which are internal areas or internal range zones, I like to call them. Uh, but as you can see here, we have bullish momentum or bullish movement back to the upside where the market started pulling back here, uh, which aided, you know, in the market kind of toppling right here, pulling back to this, making this this um, higher low right here. I mean, excuse me, this, this lower high right here. I'm sorry about that. So then the market turns back around and starts pushing back below. So we're focusing in on these uh, smaller areas of supply within this movement where the market broke structure to the downside. So hopefully you're able to follow that movement uh, as the market was pushing back lower. Sorry, I hit my mic for a second. And so let's take a look here. What we want to be able to identify is this right here. So all this bullish movement back to the upside of here. And then when the market starts making lower lows, and lower highs, creating these supply zones, this is all internal structure back to the upside and back down to the downside that comes and breaks the larger uh, area of low right here at 18,200. This, this, this low right here. Okay. So all this in between are internal areas of structure that are being uh, created as the market's moving higher and making these higher highs and higher lows on a pullback back to the upside in, in that bullish movement it's taking out liquidity as it's doing because it's taking out each one of these highs each time it moves higher okay and then when the market starts to turn back down to the downside and breaks out um excuse me, not breaks out but breaks and takes out these lows then we're breaking through areas of structure okay it's creating areas of supply so you just have to imagine if the market is is moving to the downside within a major swing within a bigger swing right here and we have all this internal area structure as it starts to move lower and it's taking out lows then it's creating areas of supply these would be like internal lows all right within a, a bigger swing and what i like to look for especially on the higher base chart when i'm looking for for zones uh to mark off of in a sense um is and we have a big swing like this okay what i like to look for is to see do we have a uh, basically a supply or demand chain setup that a chain is no more than when we have multiple areas of uh supply okay moving back to the downside would aid it in that breaker structure below um 18,200. so we got structural to the up structure to the upside creating a bullish movement but then we have areas of supply that are creating areas of inducement also creating areas of internal structure, also creating areas of smaller um, uh, supply zones within the bigger move. Again, that aid in this uh, bigger move or breaker structure to the downside here below 18,200. 18, and what we want to be able to do is identify which, which zones make sense as the market is, let's squeeze this together, retracing back up within this range, excuse me, within this chain, okay, or range right here. Which one of these smaller areas of internal areas of supply or internal areas of structure will the market hold at and that we can mark um, for potentially take a trade from going back in the direction to the downside? All right. So one, we're looking for areas where the market hasn't mitigated any uh, any zone as it's moving lower, as it's being created and breaking through these smaller internal areas of, of, of internal lows or structure to the downside. All right. These were structural breaks, bullish. Now we're making areas of supply taking out these smaller areas of or these smaller internal lows within this chain okay so we want to be able to identify where any of these supply zones mitigated meaning where, mar where the market pulled back to them as it was moving lower at any given point if it was okay we got this small little breaker structure say for example right here i'm going to show you just, just for example the market broke this area structure to the small uh, to the downside a small area right here to the downside and it immediately pulled back to it Closing the gap in between or back at the, the, the area of the zone here, in this case, supply. And I showed you how to, you know, kind of draw the zones. We're talking about uh, the gaps or the voids back at the zones. If it closes that gap there back at the zone, then that area has been, that zone has been mitigated. And I don't want to really take interest in that zone. I'm looking for fresh zones within a chain. Okay. In this case here, a supply chain to the downside that haven't been mitigated, that aided in the breaker structure of this, of this low down here. Okay. And uh, that would uh, pique my interest uh, or, or one of those zones to be uh, an area where the market could reject it. OK, and we just wait for the market to get back to that area, confirm it with the rejection on the lower base chart. But in this case here, we're just trying to identify off of the uh, a supply chain. OK, no more. Again, a supply chain. All it is is just a creation of multiple supply areas. All right. As within a bigger swing where the market breaks this bigger low down here at 18,200 and did if you know these small areas of internal supply zones 
uh, of course, they aid it or they will be um, part of the inducement phase as the market breaks lower and breaks structure down, down here. Were any of those zones mitigated? Again, if the price moved back to them or retraced back to them at any given point. So let's look at this and blow it up a little bit, okay? Now we're talking about that break below there at 18,200. We're talking about these small areas of structure, uh, which are the more than supply zones or internal areas of structure back to the downside. These are each time it breaks lower and breaks structure back, uh, moving lower, it's creating inducement, which is um, aiding in this movement to the downside where we broke structure. Now, as we continue and we break below 18,200, yes, we'll continue breaking you know, structure to the downside. These are areas of inducement too, but uh, these are what's called external areas of inducement versus internal areas of inducement. Internal areas of inducement are going to be within the range or within the bigger swing, okay? It, once it breaks below that low right there, everything else to the downside outside of it is external, but they are considered areas of inducement because the market continues rushing to the downside or making um, new, new lows. Now, what we, what we look for is, of course, the market is driven by liquidity, and that's the thing we have to identify is, is the market taking out any means of liquidity back uh, up towards or moving as we move back into the range? Meaning are we, once we start moving back and we're tracing back to this area, this is the range right here. You have to visually see that. All these areas are inside the range, okay? As the market starts to retrace back within the range back up, are we taking out areas of liquidity, all right? Are we breaking smaller highs or breaking through area, uh, smaller structures back to the upside? And if we are, then all it's doing is taking out those external areas of inducement to the downside, better known as liquidity, okay? So each time we break and take out some means, say for example right here, this high, this high, and these highs up here, these are external areas of inducement or and, and, and the market's taking liquidity out. If the market, once the market starts doing that back to the upside, Okay, back to the upside. Start to look to see if within the range right here, are there any supply zone in which the market hasn't been mitigated at any of these areas? So at any supply zone within the range, which one has not been mitigated yet? Meaning the market has pulled back to it. Untested fresh zones are the ones that work the best. Okay, but we want to see some means of liquidity being taken out, meaning areas of inducement being taken out as the market retraces back to a zone. Once you start understanding this idea and the concept of uh, inducement and liquidity and um, internal versus external area structure, then things would kind of start, you know, coming together. You have to be able to see these things with your own eye. So this area right here, this is untested small area or zone right here of supply right here, as well as this area right here. Um, as well as this area right here. Now, you have to understand this. Just because it's untested or it's a fresh zone, that it does not always mean the market's going to stop there. You have to look for the rejection or the confirmation of rejection on a lower base chart. I'm not going to go into the strategy today and how I trade it and break it down. I want to talk about the bigger picture of things, which you need to really focus in on and allow your mind to really grasp and understand just more so the concepts and the idea of what fuels the market, and that is liquidity, all right? Areas of liquidity are um, created by, again, the su a supply chain here or a demand chain. Demand chain will be in, re in reverse of if the market was moving to the upside. So um, so what I'm trying to say is here is just look for those areas of, of liquidity being taken. Look for areas of inducement where areas of inducement are being ran, in this case here, as the market's retracing. And then look for within the range here if we are tapping into a unmitigated area of supply. OK, so let's just kind of follow the market back to the upside as it moves higher here. As it does, what is it doing? It makes a high, higher, low, high, higher, low, and then these higher highs moving back with into the range. This is our first area right here. You see it? Now, look at it. It's untested. There's a small gap there. I talked about gaps in, think, in, I believe, in yesterday's video or the day before. The last video that I posted, or maybe it was two videos ago, you'll, you'll, you'll see or know that video because it was um, titled, uh, something to do with, with the gaps, how gaps are, are important. So take a look at that. I'll also leave an end cap at the end of this video here so that you'll know which video I'm referencing when, I, when I'm talking about gaps. If you are, are having a hard time understanding what I'm talking about when I, when I mean gaps, lots of times the market will move away from a zone. In this case here, a supply area right here, and it won't it, it'll pull back a little bit to it, but it'll leave a little gap right there. And you have to be able to see that because that's what marks or helps uh, helps the area to uh, become an, a, a high probability zone. Okay. I'm trying to, you know, rush all this together in a sense and bring it all together. Um, so that you understand, 
from a bigger picture what I'm talking about because there's so much going on here. You're talking about you're talking about liquidity inducement. You're talking about uh, so in this case here an example of a supply chain and how all this comes together so that you can depict and start to uh, determine which zones are hold higher weight. Okay, we think about like th think about like that. This is an area, the first area, um, which has not been mitigated back into the range here. Okay, within this chain here. All right, of this bigger swing. This smaller area of supply right here is untested. There's a gap there. It retraces back to it. It's taking out liquidity as it runs to the upside. These were external areas of inducement at the top end as it's breaking through those highs. It's taking out liquidity. We want to see liquidity being taken out because that's what fuels the market as, you know, because um, we see that as we move to the downside. That's what fuels the market as it's retracing and breaking through areas of liquidity back as it's moving back up, creating bullish structure back to the upside. That's going to fuel the market if they choose to, the banks or institutions, to, to start to rate, make moves back to the downside. So take a look here. First area of un untested, unmitigated zone of supply right there. They've taken out some area of liquidity. It gets there. It rejects. And that's all we want to see. On the lower base chart, we look to see that we get confirmation and rejection. If you're interested about understanding the strategy and how I trade it when I move down once I mark a zone off my higher base chart so I mark this zone here then I move down to my lower base chart and I'm looking for a series of steps to take place to get into that trade please watch the videos get, grab a pen and pad take some notes um, just not mental notes but put it on pen and pad so you can go back to and reference it as well uh, if you want to understand more so the trades that I take then you can become an elite member for six dollars and 99 cent all that is is just where you get the trade breakdowns and I go into detail about the trades that I do take the ones especially that I post over on the discord I break them down in detail so you grasp an understanding of you know what's taking place in my mind what am I seeing why am I taking that trade or you know where the stops can be placed at uh, the profit target and things of that nature and you also get the video playlist but moving on this is a supply zone you can see that it rejects that area very 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 nicely okay the next area as you can see right here right here you see that so the market continue it rejected it pulled back okay and well it rejected it pulled back because it's in a bullish mode right now but still we're looking for rejection to take place here if you got this trade here somewhere in 240 range it goes all the way down to 185 so this is a higher base chart trust me speaking that even though this this, this little leg right here looks like there's not much movement there there's a lot of points to be collected in that area right there then it pushes back to the upside what does it do take out some more area of liquidity this is an area, okay, inducement, which uh, moved to the downside here, okay, which aided in that break there. It takes that area out uh, as it's moving to the upside. So it, it, as it's uh, retracing back to the upside right here, it's taking out liquidity here. It's taking out liquidity here. So it's running highs as it's moving back higher to the area right here of supply. The next area of unmitigated, there's a small little gap right there, okay, of supply. What does it do there? It rejects that area there as well. All right, so you have to think about that. Now, what took place here, if you see here, I want to show you in this little movement right here, this little swing where the where it broke structure to the downside, look what happened here. There was multiple areas of, of liquidity that were being taken out, um, excuse me, back to the, uh, at, well, for one, there was liquidity that was being taken out right here. So the market, as it swung back here and then pushed back, a, pull, a pullback, it broke higher and took out liquidity here. And not only was this a area where liquidity was being taken out right here, but it was inducement as well. So, you know, they were taking areas of liquidity, taking out liquidity right here, uh, inducement, pushing to the downside. And then the market starts to run back to the upside right here, taking out liquidity all the way back to this area where, you know, inducement took place at after this area of liquidity was taken out right here. So, you know, that kind of factored into this being a great uh, area of where the market could actually hold up and, and reject that. So again, the market pushed up, pulled back, boom, broke liquidity right there to the upside or took out liquidity. This was an area where the market started to run lower. It's inducement moved to the downside. So this and it, and it became an unmitigated area, meaning where the market didn't gap, I mean where it gapped at and didn't and didn't test that zone. Look, as it comes back to that zone right there. Look what happened here. It was a great move in this area right here. Yes, it pushed a little deeper into the zone, but it rejected it, pushed lower. So in this area, we're talking about 320 all the way down here to 235. So you want to be able to 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 quickly be able to see things like this areas of where the market um, can hold up at, especially at unmitigated zones. OK, within a supply chain like this right here where there are supply zones at. 
So smaller areas of supply, which aided or which or internal areas of structure, again, were in areas of inducement that broke structure below 18,200 uh, right here. And you want to be able to find or determine which one of these zones can the market possibly hold up at and reject. Again, unmitigated. Boom. Did it take out some area of liquidity back to the upside? Yes. Okay. So these fresh unmarked zones are potentially areas in which the market can actually reject. Look for those type things. I just want to kind of talk about that today. And I'll probably do another video on this and give a um, complete opposite kind of side of things when I'm talking about looking at a, at a nice um, demand supply, I mean, excuse me, a demand chain, okay? Areas of demand, uh, which aided in, you know, a structural break to the upside where it took out a low. So we're getting, you know, that V formation to the upside versus a V formation to the downside here where the market broke structure. It starts to, this, just think of this in reverse of, okay? In reverse, as the market is breaking structure, there's a demand chain that's actually happening, all right? So like right here where the market was making bullish movement to the upside and then started breaking structure lower, it'd be in reverse of, okay? It would be where the market would be um, 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 making bearish structure to the downside and then it starts taking out areas of structure as it's moving back higher, okay? So like here, we're taking out lows as it moved as it moved lower. It would be taking out um, internal areas or small areas of highs within that demand chain as it moves higher. We'll talk about that. I'll probably show that in another video, but you know this video here is already long enough. So hopefully you'll be able to see that. Just keep in the back of your mind: inducement, liquidity. Are there gaps or, or is a zone unmitigated? Look for those type things within a supply or demand chain. Hopefully this video helps out. If it does, please. If you're not a current subscriber, go ahead and, and take uh, the opportunity now to click on the sub button. Become a member today uh, as a subscriber. Make sure to turn on all your post notifications so you never miss one of the uploads. Also, if you are currently not a Discord member and you want to join, it's free. You can find the link down in the description portion of the video. If you're interested in becoming an elite member for $6.99 a month, all you got to do is look right below the um, and down in the, the description portion of the video, you'll see another link that says become an elite member or become a member. Make sure two tiers will pop up. Make sure to choose the one that says uh, elite member or elite channel supporter for $6.99. And that's what's going to give you access to the trade breakdowns, the video playlists, and then the small other little perks and rewards you receive as well. But uh, again, if you found value in today's um, uh, video, please do me a favor and drop a like on it. Okay, we're talking about supply or demand chains. In this case here, this was an example of a supply chain. Again, demand is just in reverse of. So just want to kind of break that down. But remember, liquidity inducement are big factors um, when it comes to looking for good zones to trade from. Looking for either, you know, is a zone low probability, high probability? Is it strong? Is it a weak zone? These are things that are going to help you determine that, all right? Outside of that, hope everyone enjoyed the video. If so, please drop a like on it. I'll see you. Well, tomorrow's Monday. We enter to a new trading week. Wishing everyone a successful uh, trading week ahead. Take care.